The heading for this vodcast is homeostasis. First thing we need to do is define what is homeostasis. And we're going to apply this obviously to yourselves and your body since you're in a biology class. So when we talk about homeostasis of the body, we know that your cells work best if they have the correct temperature all the time. For example, if you get a fever or if you get too cold, that causes problems with the cells. So we like to maintain a constant body temperature. Your cells like to have a consistent amount of water, which we talked about with osmosis, and nutrient levels, making sure there's enough energy for your cells. Glucose is one of those nutrients that the body monitors real closely to make sure you don't have too much or too little glucose in your bloodstream. And different ions, like sodium ions and potassium ions, need to be regulated in your um, cells, especially your muscle cells and your nerve cells, in order for your body to work correctly. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are important for respiration, as we talked about earlier in the year. Cellular respiration requires oxygen to make energy, gives off carbon dioxide as a waste product. So maintaining that correct balance is important for your cells. And then finally, the pH. Acidic conditions, basic conditions, neutral, um, diff neutral, different neutral cells, all are important because the body needs those different pH conditions for different reactions. For example, your stomach is very acidic, and so it needs to maintain that acidic pH no matter what you eat or what you put into your stomach. So your body has different mechanisms or different ways that it keeps your cells in these constant environment. As I said, your stomach um, is always acidic and your body has ways of making sure that it stays acidic. Your temperature is always at about 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit and your body has ways of making sure that your temperature stays that way. So to wrap that all up into what is homeostasis, it's your body's way of maintaining a constant environment. So if your body is in homeostasis, that means it doesn't matter if you step outside on a cold day or you step outside on a hot day, your internal body temperature is always going to be 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. It doesn't matter if you eat something really spicy or something really bland, your stomach is always going to be at an acidic pH. This is called homeostasis, keeping everything in your body constant as far as those different levels go. So I'm going to give you an example of how this can happen. Um, we talked about body temperature a little bit already, and that's the example that I'm going to go into in a little bit more depth. So to control your body temperature, as I said, we have a constant body temperature about 37 degrees Celsius, which is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So when you take your temperature, that's what you want it to be around. But when we go outside and it's hot, our body might need to cool down. Or if we go outside and it's cold out, our body might need to warm up. All right, we need to stay at that 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have different mechanisms or different ways that our body maintains homeostasis for the temperature. All right, so ways to cool down, sweating. Okay, on a hot day, your body's gonna sweat. That evaporation of moisture from the surface of your skin draws heat away from your skin. Vasodilation, that means your veins get bigger or wider. So you've got more blood coming to the surface of your skin, which allows you to release more heat again from your body. So sweating and vasodilation are two mechanisms or two ways that we maintain the homeostasis of your temperature. Now what if it's really cold outside like it is right now and you need to warm up? Shivering is one of the most common things people will do. What shivering does is it starts your muscle cells um, contracting rapidly. And when your muscle cells contract, they give off heat. So that helps to warm up your body. The opposite of vasodilation is vasoconstriction. So your veins and your arteries actually get smaller. They constrict so that that heat isn't lost through your skin or through your blood. It stays inside those veins and arteries a little bit better. And then finally, your layer of body hair. Just the thin layer of body hair that's on your skin, for example, maybe on your arms. When you get cold, your body hair kind of stands up. You get you know, goose pimples or whatever. That layer of body hair creates kind of an insulating layer to keep heat in your body when it's cold. So all of these things are ways that your body maintains the homeostasis of temperature to make sure your internal temperature stays at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit regardless of what environment you put yourself in. 
Now, in your homeostasis project that you're going to be starting soon, you're going to be looking at how the cells help to maintain homeostasis, which then helps tissues to maintain homeostasis, which then helps whole organs maintain homeostasis. So we're going to be looking at three different levels of how these parts of your body work to keep this constant environmental condition. So let's talk about the cells first, and we're going to do this in um, comparison to shivering. Okay, so this is my shivering example. What do the muscle cells do when they shiver? Okay, so when you have um, a shivering reaction, you've actually got different cells, your muscle cells here. Okay. And what happens first when your brain tells you you're too cold and you need to start shivering is those um, muscle cells will start getting ions moving in and out of them. Get rid of this real quick. Okay, let's try this again. So here's our ions moving in and out. And they're often sodium ions, potassium ions. But when those um, ions move in and out, what they actually are doing is triggering a contraction. So those individual muscle cells that I drew in red, okay, all of these muscle cells start to contract individually because these ions are moving in and out. And we talked about ion movement through channels earlier. It's a form of active transport. So at the basic level of the cells, active transport is important for maintaining this homeostasis of these ions. Okay, so that's what the cells are doing when you shiver. Now let's move on to the tissue. If you put a bunch of cells together, so I'm just going to put a bunch of muscle cells right next to each other. They're all the same types of cells, but there's a lot of them in a group. Okay, that's what we call a tissue. So this is muscle tissue right now. Lots of muscle cells clumped together, working together. So how are they going to help the muscle to contract? Well, the muscle tissue has chemicals that move from one cell to another to contract many cells at once. So if we look at our muscle tissue again, draw that out. Okay, now this cell right here is going to start contracting. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bracket around it. That one's contracting. It's shortening. It's starting the shiver. In the process of contracting, it gets triggered to release some chemicals that go to the next muscle cell. And then that muscle cell starts to contract. And in the process, it triggers the next one to contract, and so forth, and so on, until many cells are contracting at once. Okay, so again, there's a chemical message that's sent from one muscle cell to another throughout the whole tissue to get them all to contract. So that's what's happening at the tissue level when we shiver. All right, the last one is the organ. So an entire muscle, let's say your uh, bicep muscle, for example, how does it contract? Well, when you get to that level where your tissue is contracting, it will make the whole muscle contract and relax repeatedly. So now we've got shivering going on. So let's go back to think about what this is going to look like. So here's my bicep muscle. Okay, the one that's right on top of your upper arm. And remember, it's made of muscle tissue, which is made of muscle cells. Okay, so each of these build one into the other. So now we're at this level of this whole bicep. And because our original cell here contracted, which then sent messages to the whole tissue to contract, now the whole muscle can contract at once, and that's what we call shivering. Okay, so cells, tissues, and organs work together to make sure that the body stays in homeostasis. It often starts at the cellular level, Okay, that's what triggers the homeostatic reaction, which then goes rippling down into the tissues so the cells talk to each other so that the whole tissue can participate in this action. And then finally, the entire organ, whether it's a muscle, a stomach, um, your heart, 
the whole organ is dependent upon these cells and these tissues telling it what to do to help maintain homeostasis.